Hello, I'm Beck. Welcome to my channel. Today I'm drawing a D&D character based on the roll of the dice. Let's bring out the Tower, Tower of, of Destiny! So today we have an Aracocra bard and I said Aracocra in a very specific way because normally I say Aracocra but they do have a specific pronunciation thing on the website and I guess it's coke <laughs> not cock. <laughs> anyway, um, yeah Aracocra bard. Aracocra are bird people. Uh, in terms of physicality, they look like large birds and are thus sometimes called bird folk. Uh, they are humanoid though, so they have arms and hands as well as wings. But they are typically five feet tall, have long narrow legs that taper to sharp talons and feathers that cover their bodies. They also have avian heads, often re resembling those of parrots or eagles. So whenever I draw an Aracocra, I like to look up different bird types. Uh, in this case, being a bard, I looked up songbirds and I thought that the blue jay was probably the easiest and most distinctive to draw. So that's the one that I picked. Anyway, if you are playing as an Aracocra, some distinctive traits that you'll get include flight, which means you have a flying speed equal to your walking speed. Talons, which means you can use your talons to make unarmed strikes, and Wind Caller. At third level, you can cast the Gust of Wind spell with this trait without requiring a material component. There's some more details, but you get the gist. Now, coupling that up with a bard, uh, if you're not familiar, as the name would suggest, bards are performative. Uh, people, characters, uh, but more than just a performer, they have an actual um, magic that comes from their performance. In the world of D&D, words and music are not just vibrations of air, but vocalizations with powers all their own. The bard is a master of song, speech, and the magic they contain. Which basically means that you can use your uh, performance ability to cast spells and use that in combat situations but also to help your fellow players. For example, one of the special things you get as a bard is called Bardic Inspiration. Uh, you can inspire others through stirring words or music. To do so, you use a bonus action on your turn to choose one creature other than yourself within 60 feet of you who can hear you, and that creature gains a bardic inspiration die of a d6, which means whenever they roll a uh, attack check, attack roll, or saving throw, they can add whatever the d6 rolls onto that score. You also get things like Jack of All Trades, Song of Rest, uh, you choose a bard college at level three. You have special expertise that, you know what, I'm scrolling down. There's a lot of things that you get. Uh, you can look it up on your own time. Bleh, I'm not doing your homework for you. <laughs> In terms of which uh, bard college, I would have this character whose name is going to be Jay. <laughs> Jay's Bard College, I think, is going to be the College of Valor, which is where uh, bards of the College of Valor are daring scolds whose tales keep alive the memory of the great heroes of the past and thereby inspire a new generation of heroes. These bards gather in mead halls or around great bonfires to sing the deeds of the mighty both past and present. So yeah, they're basically the standard one the one that you would imagine when you talk about a bard in D&D where they're in a tavern singing about some great hero that maybe has 
lived a hundred years ago, or maybe they're going around now, like if you're familiar with The Witcher, the toss a coin to your Witcher kind of bard. If that guy could do magic, he would be a D&D bard. So, yeah. Looking at the ability scores, we can see that Jay's lowest score is in strength, so he's not very good at physically strong, strength demanding things, so not the greatest at like climbing a cliff, which he has wings, so I guess he doesn't get a lot of practice in that. Um, pushing things that are like pushing a boulder or like knocking someone out with sheer strength. Uh, breaking free of bonds, so I guess he hasn't gotten out of being tied up very much in his life thus far. Um, but he does have high stats, well relatively high, in constitution and charisma, which means while he can't necessarily take make a punch, he can take a punch. Um, he can also, with constitution, uh, hold his breath for a long time. Uh, which would make sense if you're a performer, you need to have like that resilience, that physical resilience to be able to like be on and sing a long note and <laughs> things like that. He can go without sleep. He can survive without food or water for a little bit longer than maybe your average person. Um, so he might have been a starving artist at some point where the pursuit of his passion pursuit, I should say, of his passion, um, left him really destitute for a while. Um, and then with his charisma, obviously a bard, that's where you want your highest stat to be, so it's kind of good that it worked out being a plus two. Um, although you know I love a busted character, a bard with poor charisma is such fun. Anyway, uh, yes, charisma, it can be deception and imitation, Im intimidation. I can't say words anymore and I'm sorry, but let's keep going. Also performance, persuasion, and any other charisma checks that your DM determines is appropriate. So I mean that kind of covers it, but I guess if you're if you think of something that doesn't fall under the category of deception, intimidation, performance, or persuasion, and it's something that is very much just like a performative charismatic thing then yeah, you would be rolling charisma for that. You get it. It's If you play D&D, you get what I'm talking about. These things randomly come up, so I can't think of an example right now, but there's often a thing where you're like, well, there's not a role for this specific thing, but I guess that would require you to use your charisma more than any other of your abilities. So let's roll charisma. So the other abilities with the plus ones, Dexterity, Intelligence, and Wisdom, just mean that Jay is a little bit better than average in those areas. He can read people, he remembers things well, and he's probably okay at like dismantling traps, probably restringing his instrument. Uh, but in terms of his background, I think that he probably did the thing of like, like being that he's got the mostly above average stats, and I've said this before, I, I always read that as like he's had a decent upbringing where he had support, at least when he was quite young. So I think that he did the thing where he was raised by maybe even a well-off family and decided that he wanted to be a bard and his parents were like, no, you need to be something more practical. And so he ran away from home. And so that's where he has his like well-rounded education for his younger years. But uh, <laughs> why he sort of got the high constitution where he's learned to like have to scrap and scrounge for a meal or a place to stay. And he's often performing late at night. He doesn't get a lot of sleep usually. He has to survive on not very much food. And so he's developed a stronger constitution than maybe he had before he left home. He never had a reason to develop his physical strength though. I think even though he's performing in taverns and things, he would avoid any kind of bar fight. He'd be a very like go with the flow kind of personality. And if it does come to a situation as it obviously will need to, if he's in an adventuring party where he needs to fight, 
he would rely quite heavily on his magic and his spells and helping the other players who are maybe better at fighting by giving them bardic inspiration and healing them and things like that. So I think maybe part of the reason that he joins an adventuring party is that he has a need for friends who are stronger than him and better at fighting, maybe even better at spells and things as well. And I think he's got that adventurous spirit where maybe if the rogue or someone sidled up to him and said like, hey, we've, we've, got, a, we've got a job for you. Do you want to join our party to rob this guy or something like that? He'd be like, yeah, sounds like fun. And not really tweak that, like, this could be dangerous. Uh, he just fully trusts that the rest of the party has his back and he'll have their back and it'll all be very good. Maybe in addition to joining an adventuring party just because it's an adventure and it's fun, I think if you were looking for a more specific reason why Jay might need an adventuring party, like if it was a storyline that was sort of based around him and things that he cares about, I'm going to deviate from the uh, cliche bard who's a little bit of a ladies man and say that this guy is a hopeless romantic and somewhere along the way he found his true love. And even though he still has to travel around to make some money and do the bard thing and follow his passion in his, like, music, he also always comes back to this one true love. Maybe he's saving up money to buy a ring to marry her or um, maybe they are married and she's they've started a family so she's staying at home while he's traveling around to make them some extra money. But... In any case, if something happens to her, if she gets kidnapped or goes missing, he would be absolutely devastated and he would need an adventuring party to go after whoever it is who took her or to help investigate and follow clues and find out what's happened to her. So I think that is his like motivation. Uh, you could argue that maybe something happens to his family because he's left them, but he still loves them. But I think having that romantic spirit it needs to be some sort of romantic thing and it would be very fun to play a bard who just straight up will not hook up with anyone because he's loyal to his true love um the the trope of like the whore <laughs> the whore bard the guy who just hooks up with ed, anyone and anything um it's fun to play but it does get a little bit it's been done to death like every it's fun it's fun but it's also like loses its funniness it loses its specialness when it's like oh yeah and someone needs to romance this person i guess we'll throw in the bard because of their charisma whatever um but it could be funny if this guy needs to romance someone but when they actually accept he needs to weasel out of it before he actually follows through because he doesn't want to cheat on his wife slash girlfriend slash whatever. But yeah, this is Jay, the Aracocra Bard. Aracocra. God damn it. Do you, how do you say Aracocra? Let me know in the comments if I'm the only one who says Aracocra and not Aracocra. Or if you say it like a different, like a completely different way that I haven't even thought of yet. Like Aracocra. Aracocra. I, you know what? I'm being weird now. Don't even worry about it. Um, <laughs> let me know what you think of the drawing as well. I haven't really addressed the outfit. I had this girl in overalls in the reference material that I will have posted earlier. And uh, I thought they were cute, but in this case, they're not overalls. They're over nothings because I didn't put a shirt or anything underneath. And we know this guy doesn't wear underwear, so... Whatever, they're still cute. I like overalls. I'm just, I'm really into overalls at the moment. Um, yeah, let me know in the comments if you have any thoughts in general. And uh, I think this one came out pretty well. I'm terrible at bird legs, especially because from the knee upwards is usually the internal part of like the bird. 
whatever, you can Google it. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching this video and I will catch you next week. Okay, bye.